the Victorian Trading Company. It sounds simple, no doubt, however, I've yet to run across such a contradictory venue for potential steampunk gear. Some of their items would be an asset to any gearhead wardrobe or household. Others beg the question as to why they're on the website in the first place, given the fact that they have nothing to do with the Victorian era. As a general rule, the, the trading company is a decent site. It ships quickly, updates regularly, all the usual bread and butter basics of a good shopping site. They have a ton of paper goods as well, meaning that you could buy all your cards for any time of the year or any occasion and throw in some vintage looking business cards to boot. Their home furnishings are also quite pleasant, and I'm sure her could be augmented by an enterprising gearhead with a bucket of paint or a welding kit to create gorgeous steampunk items. And as an aristocrat who takes great pride in her appearance, I'm very fond of their bath and beauty section with its bevy of old-fashioned items to aid me in my toilette. But, you knew there was a butt coming, didn't you, dear listeners? I have a big problem with the site, namely their clothing and hat section. Throughout the rest of the shop, the trend is clearly Victorian, or at least, if not specifically Victorian, could arguably have come from that era if you squint. The clothing setup, however, is almost entirely devoid of anything vintage-looking that your average steampunk or history nerd or reenactor would actually wear. The few vintage items that they have, like this shirt front, whatever the hell that is, look so spectacularly dowdy and are in such poor taste that anyone caught wearing it, in my opinion, should be carted off by the fashion police. This seems to be a running trend in their, in their few old-fashioned items. Not only are said items based on old designs, they look like they've been living in Granny's attic for about a century before they arrive in your hands. Now here's the fact. When items were first made back in the day, they were just as flashy and gorgeous as things we have now. They didn't start off their existence looking as yellow and brittle as they do when you pull them out of a trunk. There are now non-dowdy clothes, of course, but none of these are terribly Victorian. Sure, these pretties might look make a good outfit for a prom or a cocktail party, but none truly belong to the late 1800s. They're just a modern dress that happens to be worn in a vintage-looking room in the photo. The same is true of many of their hats, especially the obviously 1920s cloches that clearly belong on the head of a flapper in a speakeasy, not on the deck of an airship or in a tea room with the Queen. So, of course, it's verdict time, and the verdict stands thus. The VTC is good for furniture, tea sets, and general Victoriana. Until they provide us patrons with Victorian tea dresses, however, I'm afraid that I cannot give their clothing the Steampunk Review seal of approval. That's it for this episode. Next time I'll be doing a two-topic show on sock dreams and gravestone artware. Ta! This was a triumph. I'm making a note here. Huge success. It's hard to overstate my satisfaction. Aperture science. We do what we must because we can. For the good of all of us, except the ones who are dead. But there's no sense crying over every mistake. You just keep on trying till you run out of cake. And the science gets done, and you make a neat gun for the people who are.